Good evening, Kimberly. Hi, Trev. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing very well, thank you. I'm yes. so happy to talk with you. And I am happy to speak to you as well. It is very exciting to be able to speak to entities upon your own planet and give greater perspective of what humanity is as a overall. Even though I am able to experience the collective consciousness in many ways, being able to express consciousness as a reflection from one entity to another is a very great and exciting experience. Um, I am very happy for this experience this evening, and I know that you have many questions and ideas, so whenever you are ready to begin, you may. Thank you, Treb. Yes! I have, um, initially I want to tell you, you're welcome to connect with my energy at whatever level you see fit, and I would appreciate so much, um... I did do a chakra clearing before our session, and I am interested to know, even after that chakra clearing that I did, if you do spot any blockages in my energy, and what measures I might take to clear them, or at least move toward clearing them better. Yes! Um, as I already have the permission to connect your energy, I would request that you close the physical eyes to place an intent within your own mind, but also in your heart, to expel the energy from the inside of the physical body to the outside and continuously push this energy out as greatly as you are able to. And in one moment, I will connect. Thank you. Yes! One moment, please. Um, within your own energy, um, it is very open and very accepting to the energy of my own. Um, and this idea helps the reading of the energy much greater. And within your first chakra, and as well as the third chakra, there are uh, blockages within both of these. The rest of the chakras are running on a very average level for humans, and even some to a very high degree. The heart chakra is very overactive in this way, and the third eye chakra, or what you would say to be the sixth chakra, is beginning to open up much more greatly. Thank um, you. Yes! To overcome the ideas of the first and the third, these are very simply based in uh, multiple human perspectives. The very first chakra is one that expresses the concept of the inability to feel safe in an environment and within your own concept or your own reality there is the uh, idea of the physicality of um, financial means if you will and this is very well understood within your own self of how the feeling of not stability can often influence the chakra to become more blocked and it is much more open than it was before this cleansing ritual and it is much more open than it was within a six month period from now and within the solar plexus region, this often uh, goes hand in hand with the concepts of financial worry or financial um, non-feelings of safety, as you are often looking into the future um, for projections with emotions. Um, this also goes back to the past concepts of connecting to things in your previous times that has not made you happy or that brings you negative emotions when you recover these ideas, um, but both of these are very um, easy to overcome within the concepts of understanding your own power to create, also understanding your own ability to multiply the energies that you are having um, in your excitement to be able to overcome and manifest um, the environment and the situation in which you need to. Within the concepts of looking backward and forward into time, you must remember that when you are focusing to the future concepts, um, whether it be with money or any situation that requires 
perhaps worry within your own mind, to remind yourself that this future uh, is not something to worry about. It is something that you must create in the now to achieve the great existence that you wish um, to the future idea. And the past is the same concept, reminding yourself this past is not what has built you. It is not what has made your existence what it is today. It is only a set of circumstances that you have manifested so that you are able to be in the situation that you are now to be able to manifest those things that you wish to experience in the future. When you are looking back into the time, do not place uh, a degree of memory to this, as in, I remember that I was negative in this time, or I remember that I was sad or hurt or devastated in this time, only that you remember something that you have experienced that has helped you grow. Placing an excitement or a non-negative um, emotion to this pastime will greatly um, help remove the chakra system that you are feeling at this time. And the future is the same concept, because there is nothing to worry of the future, as well as you are manifesting in your excitement in the now. Thank you. Perfect. Yes! Oh, I appreciate that so much. Yes! You're very welcome. Oh, I have uh, so many questions. I think I'm going to jump around in my list here. First is... Concerning portals, um, I guess portals to other worlds or other times that we can experience here on Earth. I've had a couple of incidents happen to me where, and I'll explain them, and then maybe you can help me to understand what I experienced a little bit better. Yes! <laughs> One time I was at the lake and watching some birds fly and one particular bird was rather large and white it looked unusual um, to the kinds of birds that I normally see there and as it flew by a thin branch of a tree it literally disappeared from view and I mean poof gone <laughs> um, it was as if it flew into a completely other another earth or time or something. It was in midair and just was gone. I searched all around the lake with my eyesight and trying to find this bird and it, it didn't come back. The second incident that happened, I was at the same location at this lake, which I go to quite frequently, so I'm wondering because of my energy there, it could be an impact. I saw a woman walking on the path in the grass Although she was dressed in an outfit and pushing a baby carriage that were dated in an Earth timeline, uh, probably late 1800s, early 1900s, instead of a contemporary time like right now. And I was, I was sitting in my vehicle at the time, and I, had, uh, I felt frozen because I felt compelled to get out of the vehicle and approach her and ask her, about her outfit or something but for some reason I couldn't move <laughs> and then the next thing I know she was gone so I was curious about those kind of experiences if you could explain that to me a little bit yes um, both of these experiences are less to do with ideas of portals and more to do with the concept of this third eye that we have expressed as beginning to open more and um, being able to experience that of a higher density level, uh, what you would consider to be the afterlife or the ghost zone between densities three and four or four and five. Um, this idea and concept directly relates to this. As you are experiencing this lake, there is positive attributes of energy, not only from your perception of this lake, but also with the physical energy of this lake, co-creating an opportunity for this third eye to co-create energy that helps open not only the third eye, but also the experience of being able to perceive what is in the area. This idea will help allow you grow within your own self, within activation of this third eye, within over-processing this concept, if you remember that these experiences are truly unique. 
reminding yourself that this is your true um, view of power within your own self to activate these other realities that you choose to experience. Perceiving these concepts of opening this third eye and looking into these densities, looking into a higher physical vibrational level, will show you that your true gift is able to be accessed. Oh, and what, um, could you, thank you for that. Um, yes! That's, that's completely fascinating to me. Um, so this is unique to my universe. In other words, um, as my third eye opens more and more, and I'm kind of alternating between fourth and fifth density, I may start to see more and more entities appear or come in and maybe disappear again, things like that. Well, the concept is not that you are moving from the fourth to fifth density. Is that it is that you are moving from the third to fourth density. Okay. And while you are translating from third to fourth density, you are going through an energetic zone that is once previously made for mankind's afterlife. This is the oh. go zone that all entities go between yeah. incarnations from this level of third density to fourth density. It is in between these harmonic levels. I so see. as you are going from the third to fourth density, you are within the spectrum and realm of this go zone. Therefore, you are able to more uh, easily perceive these concepts. But these specific entities, this child, this woman, and this bird, all of these entities are directly connected to your own experience, as even though they are able to be experienced by other entities, if their ability to open the third eye is more um, great than the average human, um, specifically it was cited for your own energy, as this lake that has a perception of special meaning to you, your consciousness increases this probability to experience these entities who are near this specific lake area. Oh, neat. Yeah! <laughs> oh, this is kind of a good segue into my next question. Um, I was wondering, I've, I've been reading a book by a lady named Dolores Cannon. I'm not sure if you're familiar with her. Yes, the host <laughs> is very aware of this name. Okay. Perhaps not much of the details of the work that she is in, but aware of the concept of who she is. Yes. Yeah. What she does are past life or future life re regression hypnotherapy. So she'll put the human or soul being into a trance state and they can visit past lives or probable future lives, things like that. And she'll ask questions of the source energy that is there. I know that I'm curious about a few things to do with my soul connections with other entities and probable past or future lives. I know you get asked this a lot, but... Um, I'm going to mention a few and then let you take it where you see or understand the energy to be. Um, when you had a session with the hybrid races about a month ago, um, I had asked a question about my hybrid child who was a Yael uh, Shoshani and you came back with information, actually, not pertaining to the Yael, but pertaining to um, someone from your planet, a female, who was connected to me in some way. So over the course of the last several weeks, I've been looking at the Arga constellation, and Capella in particular, to attempt to connect with this female entity. I don't, um, I kept, at first I was hearing a name, kind of like Shah something, but I'm not sure. I haven't seen, mm, I, I had a slight visual once of a face, but I haven't really met her per se in, as, 
at least that I can remember. Because I know that sometimes we dream or we actually do travel astrally when we're sleeping and we may not remember those experiences and that we're in fact actually interacting with people and other entities all over the place all the time. And I don't know if that really happened or not. Do you have any information about that one? Yes, there is much information that I'm able to express to you within this idea. The entity that you are connecting to is truly that of my own race, one that most humans affectionately have nicknamed the Yitz. Um, this is also uh, an entity that I am well aware of. As you see our expressive names within your own definition of what a name is, um, the concept is that there is no true meaning to our direct name. We have given representations to humans as a name because we understand the concept of needing to be able to express a word to identify an entity. This is why my name is Treb or Yitni. And this entity, um, perhaps with your own co-creation, should be the Shab or Yitni as she is within the portion of my own planet, upon my planet, within the star, and the Sha is the representation of the energetic signatures that you have given her. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes! Have you um, personally met her? Yes, there is many entities that I am uh, physically aware of within my own planet, and I have connected to all of them, and physically I have connected to most of them. There are entities who prefer to stay within specific areas of the planet, and although I have been upon all of the planet, it has not been within their highest excitement to meet me. But I am aware of all entities and directly connected to all of these entities. This entity specifically wishes for me to express to you that she has tried to connect you very often in dream states as you are able to perceive this. There is also times where it is in a semi-sleep state or a dream state state in which she has tried to connect you. And also within a meditative state she wishes to connect you more deeply. Oh, that's exciting. I know that um, I have... I have been working on my meditation and changing things up a little bit to devise different methods. Um, I guess <laughs> this is very exciting to me. <laughs> um, I'm looking yes! forward. I am looking forward to meeting her uh, in meditation consciously. That would be fantastic. I will keep up my efforts um, in my meditation. Um, to do that, do you have any suggestions about a particular method that, based on your connecting to my energy, that might be more feasible than another? The concept of connection to an entity is first the realization that this entity does not lie with an external um, definitions of energy or consciousness that this entity is directly connected to your oversoul as a fractal as you are one fractal you are both perhaps seem to be separate fractals but truly you are both one and the same to remind yourself not to connect outwardly but to connect inwardly with a intent or representation of intent to connect directly to the fractal within you that is the representation of consciousness that symbolizes this entity. This is the very greatest concept and way to connect. The host is very well aware of the means to connect to my own energy. And if you wish for me um, to assist you in connection, um, Speak to the host of the ways how to connect to me, and he will be able to express this to you. And as you call upon my own energy, I will assist to connect you with this energy. Oh, I thank you. I will do that. I yes. appreciate that. Yes. That's, what, that's so kind of you to offer. Yes, it is very exciting for us as well. <laughs> um, I also wish to express perhaps one last idea, that the host is very aware of several symbolistic concepts to connect to our own race. And within your own concepts of connection, it is very separate and different from one entity to the next within their own way of connecting. But there is 
the concept of symbolism that is most important. As you have experienced the constellation Aurigae, and as you have placed your emphasis upon Capella, this has given you a meaningful signal, or a meaningful symbol, if you will. Mm. So if you wish to experience a symbolism that is more fit to this entity, and um, this may be done, but if you wish to use this one symbolism as a connection method, the host may suggest several other opportunities and other various means and techniques that has worked for him. Okay, perfect. I will. Yes! Oh, I have, um, I guess, a curiosity about um, a few other entities I've encountered and whether or not they're just soul connections or if you perceive them um, my connection to them to be a probable past or future life. Um, one is a Syrian entity, I believe, that appeared to me in a vision during a healing session and looked very much like a fish. Um, I love fish in the water, so I'm thinking that it appeared to me that way, regardless of its true appearance. Um, if they were a physical being. Also, there's a gray being that I've seen a few times. Um, I say a gray because it appears to be a gray, but I know so many uh, races look that way, so I don't know who it is or how it's connected. Um, also have, I've had a brief visit from what I perceived to be a type 2 reptilian being um, who seemed very curious about me or at least about my energy uh, concerning how much love I have um, but I woke very rapidly from that vision so I didn't have time to pursue it much further but with those three do you have any ideas about my potential connections there Yes, there is a connection within your own self to a Syrian entity who is within the matrices that we are within now of this universe. And within this concept, um, there is a race of aquatic beings that are what you would say to be hybrid dolphin humans. And this is a Syrian entity who is of a type 1 relation to humans. And this entity is one that is within your oversoul. I am not sure of the complexities of this connection that you have, as I am only able to perceive a direct connection and nothing more in the ideas of why, how, or when. But this entity does express great love for you and great connection, and this is why you have seen this represented as a fish, as the fish is the most common aquatic animal that comes to your mind when you believe of entities that live upon the water or within the water. Oh. This gray entity that you speak of is from a star that is known to be Wesin. This is a very um, tall entity that is over six and one half to seven foot. Um, this entity that is gray is a representation of the entities that are upon Wesin. Um, I am directly connected to Mimi within this race. And this is the energy that you are showing. As there is many entities who I have experienced too specifically that are connected to the host, who have connections of the Oversoul with the same race. Oh, well that's exciting to know. Yes! <laughs> um, within the Type 2 entity, there is more than one reptilian um, style of energy that is connected to you um, within the Oversoul. One tends to be more curious than the other, but within this concept I am not able to express a greater idea of what race it is coming from, as this entity is similar to approximately five separate reptilian races. And the secondary reptilian that I'm able to perceive is not one that is consistently connecting to you. Um, this entity is within a race that is within a star system that is very dull to the human eye. You are not able to experience it with the human eye that is within the Draco constellation. Oh. And I have never felt any, um, anything other than curiosity or goodness from them 
even though they may be type 2, um, I don't sense that they have any ill will toward me at all. Yes, this is very true. The one entity who is a type 2 that is more directly connected to you, this is one of the type 2s that are not malevolent by nature. The secondary one that I have expressed that is within the Draco constellation on a small red star, such as our own star, um, this entity is more um, to a negative entity, and this is why it does not connect to you. Um, uh. When it does perceive your energy, it does not directly connect you. It only expresses the concept of looking, of curiosity, of what the human energy is, as it is very important to this entity. So this is how this entity experiences you. Oh, well, that's good. He can look all he wants. I don't mind. <laughs> yes, this is very kind of you. <laughs> well, I can only hope, Treb, that um, given my situation, I'm somewhat of a good example of being a loving kind, a, a person full of loving kindness. And if that example serves his curiosity well, then great. <laughs> yes! Many entities of a type 2 variety who are more um, a beginning or mid-level type 2 entity, one who is not malevolent, to one that is perhaps semi-malevolent. These entities do not wish to directly connect often to entities. It is more the curiosity of what you are. They are understanding that the capability of love, but also great disconnection, lies within each every, um, each and every individual human upon your own um, collective consciousness. Mm. That's exciting. Yes! <laughs> so, now I guess I'm, I'm curious about... Um, my role here, I know that um, more and more I seem to be getting confirmations that um, I have a highly empathic um, spirit in that I seem to be, at the moment, <laughs> a little bit scattered with my energy, um, kind of an inspirer, but an observer, um, very perceptive, wanting to help, but I am, um, I guess, pulled in so many different directions. Uh, that's just really me following my highest excitement, but honestly, it feels like so many different things excite me. I don't know where to begin sometimes, and or how to gauge which thing is the most exciting. <laughs> So, do you have any tips on dealing with that? <laughs> yes! There are often many concepts of things that you are wishing to do or you are wishing to experience. The greatest concept is to take the one that is the highest within the rank of things that you wish to do and experience it to the fullest capability that you are able to experience this. If this means that drawing a picture uh, or doing an artistic thing is your highest excitement for this day, then place all of the energy into it. But if you are having three ideas and none of them seems to be better than the others, then place them upon sheets of paper. Um, mix them up as if you do cards without looking and physically take the first one. If it is a concept where you are not perceiving any concepts of excitement, but you are still wishing um, to experience one, then it is the idea of placing several opportunities or several concepts of things that perhaps could be exciting or perhaps could not be exciting, and choosing them in an individual and random way as well. There are many ways to do this, um, but the greatest, the greatest one that aligns with the higher self, the one that passes the test every time, is the expression of bringing these multiple concepts into a meditative state and to name each one of them individually in a row after your physical body is um, very relaxed, after your mind is very awake, after an intent is expressed, I wish to find 
uh, a great excitement within me. And then you place these individually in a row um, to go on a bicycle, to go on a car ride, to go on a walk, to go paint a picture, to watch a movie. And then you are placing all of these in a row. And when the one that is most highly expressive within your own consciousness comes, it will give you a great indicator. You will feel a difference in saying or thinking this word as you would the other concepts. It gives you a more excited idea, even if it is very slight. But the idea is to remind yourself that you must trust yourself in this exercise. Otherwise, you will begin to say, is this a feeling that is more exciting? Did I pick the wrong one? You must not second guess these concepts when you are in this meditative state or it will not work. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that makes so much sense. Yes! And uh, this is a direct higher self or oversoul allowing you to make a choice for you. It is one that allows you to be able to guide um, from direct higher self to yourself. Um, and the oversoul will assist you in connecting from higher self to yourself as often as you choose to. But the the very most emphasis that I express should be placed upon the self-trust concept, as if you do not do this, then you will never be able to perceive the energetic exchange or the energetic change from one to the next. Oh, thank you. I agree on that. I, I know that I've second-guessed myself several times, so <clears throat> I will keep that in mind and instead actually not keep it in mind I'll keep it in soul <laughs> yes. I, will, I will try that new technique I'm very excited about that yes perhaps the uh, play upon words that you are also uh, looking for is to keep it in heart yes yes <laughs> that's absolutely right <laughs> oh okay oh I have a, another question here um <sighs> I've recently become attracted to crystals and I guess it was there was a jump from when I was a very young child here on earth and was interested in rocks and minerals and I used to get really excited about conglomerate rocks. I'm not sure if you understand what that means but they're rock composition that are multiple kinds that are stuck together as one. So it kind of reminds me of unity and diversity in a way, in the mineral world, <laughs> if you will. And now these new crystals that I've discovered, um, I've selected by feeling their energy with my hand. And like I'll open the cabinet in the store and run my hand across the crystals. And some of them I can actually feel energy moving. And so I've purchased them. Uh, it's just a, a small, modest collection. And for specific purposes, to ground me or for grounding purposes, um, but also to expand, um, be able to, um, I've only astrally projected consciously a couple of times, and I'd like so much to be able to do that more often too. And I thought it might be able to help. One of the crystals is called a Lemurian citrine. And I was just curious if, based on my energy and the crystals I've obtained, if you can tell me why my sudden refascination with these minerals or crystals and if they may have a purpose outside of just my own life or my own guidance, if you will. Yes! Um, this concept is very easy to express as as you are growing, this first natural excitement was there. But as you are growing to be older in a separate stage of your existence, you are revisiting this concept because energetically you are, uh, well, deeply knowing, if you will, or deeply knowing very well is the better idea to express this, that the crystals are very great holders of energy.
And as you experience each crystal individually, it is not the crystal itself that resonates highly with you, it is the energy that has been stored upon this crystal. Um, many of the crystals that you are experiencing are very deeply connected back to the ancient times of what you would say to be Atlantis, where energies of entities who are very highly balanced connected to these, um, they are using these to store their own energy, as well as distribute this energy, not only in the grid systems, but also within other entities for healing. Um, this is why these are so highly resonant to you, and this also allows you to revisit your previous incarnation within the Atlantean times. Wow, that's so exciting too, because I didn't ask about Atlantis. <laughs> that's kind of exciting. Um, yes! <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to ask you to elaborate on any probable past or future incarnations that I may have had, um, the strongest ones, I suppose. Yes, within your own previous incarnations and future incarnations, the Atlantean one is not that that sticks out very greatly. It is one that is perhaps medium um, in energetic um, protrusions, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. But if you wish to experience this concept, um, opposed to ones that stick out or protrude even more, um, this is completely up to you. Oh, I, I guess I would ask you to, you know, first focus on the strongest ones that may be influencing or energetically um, <clears throat> affecting my current lifetime here, um, and then Maybe maybe the Atlantean one, even though it's medium energy, maybe it's having a strong impact on me here. I don't know. Um, but I'll let you decide. Yes! Um, before I connect to these concepts, there is a request that I may share an idea with you. Of course. Within your own energy, how you are perceiving that these previous incarnations or these future incarnations, both of them coming from probabilities, um, not in-depth, direct, um, affirmative connections, but more so in probabilities, I wish to express the idea that it is not the previous incarnations that are affecting the now existence, it is the now existence that links you to the previous incarnations. So let us express it in this way. For example, if you are an entity who is greatly driven by the love of science, then this allows you in the energy of now to connect two previous existences in which you share this love for science. But if you change your idea or mind within one month, and then you have a love for, instead of science, math, then this math love will be your new energy. And it will link back into a life that is no longer one of science, but one of math. So it is not your previous existences um, that are within probabilities or your future existences that are within probabilities that are affecting the now. It is the now that is affecting both of these concepts. Okay, I follow you. That is interesting. And I can see how uh, things can always fluctuate then. <laughs> yes, this is why in one um, sitting, you may speak to me of your previous incarnation, and then a two-year later period, this previous incarnation will no longer apply to you. Excellent. Then that means I'm having that many more adventures. <laughs> yes! This is exactly the idea of the way it is set up, so that you may experience more of yourself, because you are not the same entity who you were in two years previous, and you are not the same entity that you were um, two years from now. You are always changing the complete makeup of who you are. There is only an overall layer of energetic signatures that keep you into an individual fractal that is connected to an individual oversoul. All of the other concepts, all of the other layers, are consistently fluidly changing. Wow. Yeah! <laughs> 
So if you wish to now experience these concepts of previous and future incarnations that are directly connected to you in the moment of now, um, I will elaborate upon these ideas. Yes, please. Thank you, Chad. Yes! Um, one experience that you have that is more sticking out or protruding within your own energy as a probable past is, is one that is within the 1800 area, the very beginning of this. Um, you are in a European country. Um, it is not sure if it is France or the country next to France to the east. But within this, it is very uh, close to this line. And as you are in this existence within the beginning of 1800, there is a consistent worry of being financially non-stable. As you are an artist, you are able to sell many paintings that are great um, for a great amount of money in your young 20s. But then you begin to not sell any. You have begin to develop and acquire a taste for a specific lifestyle and a specific means of having um, financial um, ideals that are being met, and then you are not able to sustain this. So in this existence, you have turned to a life of crime, you have turned to a life of thieving, to be able to keep this money in the same situation that you had in the previous. And the more that you become deeply ingrained into the idea of stealing, you become discomforted by this. It is against your belief system. Society has told you it is not correct to steal, so you become more disconnected from yourself. And as you do this, the less the artistic ability becomes, also the less that you care of the artistic concepts and begin to steal more. And after approximately 15 years of this, there is a revelation as you are caught by an entity, but you are not jailed or sent to the police. They sit with you and they pray. And as you are both praying, you begin to realize that this thieving lifestyle is not what truly will inspire you. So you take what money you have left from the previous robberies and you go out into the um, woods, if you will, and you begin to live very simply and you begin to integrate yourself back into the art style. And as you do, you become able to connect your art. Um, there are two of your artworks that are very um, popular and sell for great amounts of money, but this does not matter to you as you still um, enjoy living out into this wooded area. You are able to buy a house so you are more comfortable upon the land that you have squatted for so many years, but are still able to experience this place and it becomes a very happy um, and satisfying life as you end your life um, into your late 60 year period by doing consistent artwork that you love. Wow! This is the very strongest concept in the previous incarnations. And in your um, probable future incarnations, there is one that is 1,200 years in the future time of how you see to be now. And this exists upon humanity uh, moving to another area. Uh, it is not within the solar system. It is within another solar system. It is a very bright star. Um, one that is brighter than the sun, so that is moved away. The planet is much further than Earth is from your own star. And in this, um, Earth begins to be a new entity. Um, the collective consciousness of the planet integrates with the collective consciousness of the entity. And it is a very simple lifestyle. At the beginning, it was great in technology, and there was several hundreds of years where you are building more buildings upon the planets, technology is becoming greater, but then there becomes a very great problem with the source of energy. The source of energy is a natural element that is found within the ground, and it has run out. So now you are on the planet to your own devices, and although it was not um, thought it would be an easy transition. The Earth instincts of your pre-technology um, era of Earth is ingrained very greatly in the DNA, so you are able to adapt very easily. And as this race begins to adapt more easily, it grows into a more natural setting, the old buildings are removed, and you are truly one with nature again. This is near the completion of the fourth density, 
um, unconditional love that you have so uh, longly wished to achieve. Oh, that's exciting. Yes, it is very exciting. I can see the um, parallels between my life now and both of those experiences. Yes, it is both coming from one area, one thought and one concept that you accept and that you live with for very long periods of time. Then there becomes an adjustment within the energy and then there is a perception of ease at the end of this existence. One that is more greatly connected to what you truly are than all that is thought in the previous times. Wow. <sighs> Yes! I'm a little bit, like, overwhelmed by all this information, Trap. <laughs> it's so exciting. Yes! <laughs> this is very exciting to me as well. <laughs> I am amazed at your abilities. <clears throat> I have, um, let's see, one, one last question, perhaps, maybe two, I don't know. Yes! I have, um, with... Because I like being outdoors, uh, specifically in trees in the forest, and if I'm walking or driving, sometimes I'll see a plant where it might it might not be a super windy day, but there'll be one plant out of all the rest that, for whatever reason, seems to wave as if it's being blown by a really strong wind. And it will literally bounce from, it'll bend and bounce from one side of the ground to the other, like if it's a small bush. And the rest of the leaves and trees around it aren't moving. And I wonder about that, maybe elemental energies there, or what could explain something like that that I'm observing? Is that again connected perhaps to my... Uh, third to fourth density ghost zone? <laughs> oh, this is not directly connected to this idea. It is more so the concept of directly connecting to the one entity. As you oh. experience this entity, it is lifting the consciousness within this as you draw your attention to this um, one entity, this one plant. It becomes more connected to your direct consciousness. And we have expressed the concept previously that as we interact with second density entities, um, a question was asked, how do you connect to second density entities? And the answer that we have given was that we interact with it and raise its vibration so that it may be aware that a higher vibration is possible. And this is what you are doing with this entity. And as you do this, it is creating a reality that is separate than the realities around them because the consciousness level and vibration is much higher than the entities around them. So now they are able to experience this wonderful waving of wind in an excitement that is a representation of happiness. And perhaps, if you say, dancing of the soul. That is so exciting. <laughs> yes! Uh, I do talk to the trees and the bushes and plants and flowers, and sometimes the trees respond directly, I can tell. But when, it was a, when it's moving so distinctly on its own, not as a unit, I guess it kind of startled me a little bit. But that is really exciting to connect with one like that. I... Um, Wow, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it's very exciting to me as well. <laughs> oh, my. So my last question, I guess, um, that I will ask you today has to do with the significance of colors um, energetically and my empathic abilities. So how that goes together is... When I close my eyes, I can see sometimes energies moving, and I see them in brilliant colors, like specifically teal, purple, gold, orange, and silver and white. And there are times when I might be meditating where I can't see any colors, or I have a hard time connecting with that color energy that I usually see. So I wonder about those, I guess, dead 
times when it looks all black. Um, but empathically, sometimes I don't see auras when I open my physical eyes, but um, I feel like I'm hearing people's exact thoughts. And sometimes then I can close my eyes, I'll see a color that maybe it's reflecting me or my own consciousness, or maybe the other person, I don't know. But um, I can actually, when I might look at a stranger walking down the street, I'll feel instantly like I know exactly what's on that person's mind or what they're feeling at that moment. And then I'll disconnect, but, you know, I'll just accept it and keep moving on. Um, but maybe if I go... If I go somewhere where I'm meditating, I might see a white energy or a yellow or something. And I don't know necessarily if that's residual energy from that connection empathically or if that's myself or is it always all myself <laughs> that I'm creating. Um, let us express this in the terms, a slang term perhaps that you would use. This is six of one and one half dozen of the other. It is both of these. Um, it is residual energy that is not only left from the entity itself, but also the interaction with the entity that you are experiencing. When you are having these dark, no colored times, this is a representation of the third eye closing more. You are opening it up when you are experiencing these colors, and each color is given a representation within your own consciousness of what this energy means. I am not able to extrapolate these specific colors within your own consciousness, but within each individual there is always a representation or a symbolism of colors from one meaning to the next. It is the concentration that you place upon a color in a meditative state that will truly allow you the ability to find what this color is resonant to. So if you are able to close your physical eyes in a meditative state, to focus upon one of these colors that you are experiencing, to um, only place an intent, I wish to observe this color and to find out the symbolism of energy of what it means, and then once you have your answer given to you, or a feeling emotionally, then you will write down this emotion upon the paper, or write down the idea that you are receiving, or the word of what it means. And then from now on you will understand, let us use an example, as the yellow color that I am feeling means great joy and happiness, as this is either a word that you have received in meditative state, or whether it is the emotion that you are feeling while you are observing this color in the meditative state, and then you will be done with your meditation. The next day, place another color into your mindset. Place a blue color into your mindset. And when you begin to think of the word excited, or when you begin to feel emotionally excited, Write it down upon a paper and be done for the day with this concept. Continuously doing this with every color that you are able to observe in a meditative state will allow you to directly connect the symbolisms of one concept of what one color is meaning to you. Oh, thank you. Yes! <laughs> Your empathic nature that you are experiencing will also allow you to do this as I have expressed previously, not only with the thought of what an energy is, but a feeling. And these feelings, again, must be correlated to trusting yourself. Because if you begin to feel sad, and you do not believe it is because you are observing this color, then you will not be able to perceive sadness to this color when this truly is the meaning of this. Excellent. Yes! Um, I wish to express to you if there is any last idea or concept that you wish to express. Now would be the time to do this. Ah. <laughs> I have one short last question, if you don't mind. Yes! Um, is, is shyness or timidity fear? 
Yes! <laughs> and the concept of shyness or timidness is the unwillingness to express yourself to your highest degree. It is one that is afraid of judgment. It is one that is fearful of being exposed for what you truly are. And this is a very, um, it is a very light-based fear, but it is still a fear nonetheless. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Chubb. Yes, you are very welcome. I wish to express to you this evening that it has been a very great excitement, that I am I'm very excited to have been able to be a mirror for you as you have been a mirror for my own self. And I wish to express this great excitement as I understand that the meaning of life is expressing your consciousness in various means. And I am sending you great gratitude for being able to be an entity who I am able to do this with. Oh, I, I love and appreciate you so much. Um... I'm sending you a hug energetically. I hope you can feel it. <laughs> yes, and I am able to express this hug back to you. Also, I wish to express that I love you greatly as well. And with this idea being expressed, I will leave you this evening in love and in light. And we will experience each other again very soon. Thank you, Chubb. Love and light to you as well. Yes. Good night. Good night.